That's TV. Hallelujah. I'm Harold Herring, and that's my fine wife, Beth. Ooh. March 4th, 50 years. I'm excited about that. Tonight, or on this broadcast, we're going to talk about seven things better than any electronic toy. Hallelujah. This time of year, it's the time for Christmas lists. That's it. From the youngest family member to the oldest. Our family members grew up in an age, as they grew in age, if you remember, so did the price of their toys. Oh, yes. Roy Smith, a renowned Methodist writer of Sunday School Literature, said, he who has not Christmas in his heart will never find it under a tree. I love that quote. During this season, we know that, well, there's what we call the first four gifts. That's it. First four play. gifts rule. That's, That's it. it. The rule. Something they want, something they need, something to wear, and something to read. There you That's go. That's the four. Over the years, there have been tons of gadgets, mm. gizmos, and electronic toys. And so many things, a lot of them start with the letter I, which we'll talk about a little bit in this. You know, iPhone has been out for years. And uh, iToys came along. That's it. And we all know why. People like things that start with the letter I. I. <laughs> Here's our list of things, seven things better than any electronic toy or goofy gift. Hallelujah. Number one. I think, I think, you better think what you're trying to do to me. It's a popular refrain from Aretha Franklin's classic song, Think. We need to think about what we're doing for others. Yes. But so we need to also think about what we're doing for ourselves in the process. Mm. More exciting than all of this is remembering what God is thinking about us. Jeremiah 29, 11. 2911 King James. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace, not of evil, to give you an expected end. Mm. Now, according to Strong's Concordance, the word think, the Hebrew word is H2803, and it means to think, plan, esteem, calculate, invent, make a judgment, imagine, or count. Now, here are seven things and seven keys to thinking. First, think on these things. Philippians 4 8, 4 8 Message Bible. Sum it all up, friends. I'd say you'll do best by filling your minds and meditating on things true, noble, reputable, authentic, compelling, gracious, the best, not the worst, the beautiful, not the ugly, things to praise, not things to curse. Put into practice what you learned from me what you saw and heard and realized. Mm. Second, think before you speak. Napoleon Hill, the amazing speechwriter for President Franklin Roosevelt and the author of Think and Grow Rich, once said, think twice before you speak because your words and influence will plant the seed of either success or failure in the mind of another. What we speak determines our destiny. Wow, so true. When President John F. Kennedy said we will place a man on the moon in this decade, he set a stage for the event that took place. Whenever a person in authority speaks the desired results into being, a spiritual dynamic is loosed, even by those who may not realize what they're saying. In John 18, 14, Caiaphas, the high priest of the Jews, prophetically speaks the God-ordained reason for Jesus' death without even realizing it. It says, Now Caiaphas was he which gave counsel to the Jews that it was expedient that one man should die for the people. Wow. Third, think before you act. Proverbs 13, 16. Proverbs 13, 16 in the New Living Translation says, Wise people think before they act. Fools don't. And even brag about their foolishness. William Arthur Ward, another amazing man, once said, Before you act, listen. Before you react, think. Before you spend, earn. Before wow. you criticize, wait. Before you pray, forgive. And before you quit, try. Wow, that's really good. Fourth, think about possibilities 
instead of impossibilities. Mark 9, 23, one of our favorites. Yes. And God's Word translation says, Jesus said to him, as far as possibilities go, everything is possible for the person who believes. When someone else sees what someone else sees as impossible, you may see as possible. That's right. Never let anyone steal the dream that God has placed in your heart. Mm. Remember, everything is possible to the person who believes and who walks by faith. Fifth, think about your future and your destiny. Success in life is determined in large part by whether or not we involve God in our planning for our future. He's the one with the perfect advice about our destiny. Psalm 32, 8, one of my favorites, and especially in the classic amplified version, says, I, the Lord, will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with my eye upon you. I like to claim it every day, and really everybody should. What does the word of God say about his plans for our future? We already read one of them in Jeremiah. This one's in John 10:10. 10, 10. In the New Living Translation, it says, the thief's purpose is to steal and kill and destroy. My purpose is to give them a rich and satisfying life. Hallelujah. God will instruct and teach us in the way that we should go for a rich and satisfying life and the fulfillment of our future and our destiny. Amen. Mm. Six, think before saying yes. Or no? Here are seven questions to think about before you answer yes or no. First, why are you saying yes or no? Second, explain why you're really saying yes or no. Third, what are the benefits or drawbacks of you saying yes? Fourth, what are the benefits or drawbacks of you saying no? Fifth, does saying yes or no affect the fulfillment of your goals? Six. If you say yes or no, who will be impacted by your response? And does it matter? Mm. Seventh, will, you, will your saying yes or no matter in a week, a month, or a year? Matthew 5, 37, Classic Amplified. Let your yes be simply yes, and your no be simply no. Anything more than that comes from the evil one. Seventh, think about who you're hanging with. Psalm 1 1. I'm sorry, it just struck me funny. I know. Psalm 1 1, classic Amplified. Blessed, happy, fortunate, prosperous, and enviable is the man who walks and lives not in the counsel of the ungodly, following their advice, their plans, and purposes, nor stands submissive and active in the path where sinners walk, nor sits down to relax or rest where the scornful and the mockers gather. There are really three stages in this passage. That's right. It's First, good. not walking and living in the of the ungodly, following their advice, plans, and purposes. When we walk by, we hear something that interests us. Idle talk and gossip can always be interesting in a negative way. Second, not stopping to stand in the way of sinners. By being intrigued enough to stop and stand, we're really becoming submissive to their advice, plans, and purposes. We become inactive in the things that we know to be true from the Word of God. Mm. When we stand, we stop walking by so that we can participate. Well, be careful with this. So that we can be participate in what they're doing. 1 Kings 19.12 First third, Kings 19. But you forgot the third Man. part. The third part, isn't it? Refuse oh, I skipped to it. sit. Yeah. Third. That's refusing the good part. To, refusing to sit down and relax That's right. with the scornful Amen. and the mockers by embracing their ideas and conversations. When we sat down, we settled in to embrace and entertain what we've heard. Mm. Notice the progression and walk, stand, and sit. We should always prefer that still small voice over that of all others. First okay. Kings 19.12, Classic Amplified. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a sound of gentle stillness 
in a still, small voice. Number two, I think. Harold loves to remember when, even as a young boy, his mom taught him that every day was Thanksgiving Day. And that's a great attitude to become embedded within your spirit. If you make every effort to have a heart of Thanksgiving every day, it will make, well, it'll make triumph a better experience and trials better as well. Colossians 4.2 in the New International Version says, Hallelujah. Rooted and built up in him, strengthened in the faith as you were taught and overflowing with thankfulness. One of the best ways to strengthen our faith is to continually thank God for his abiding presence in our lives. Every time you see him, thank him. And the more you thank him, the more you're going to see him. Colossians 3.15 in the Message Bible says, Let the peace of Christ keep you in tune with each other, in step with each other. None of this going off and doing your own thing. And cultivate thankfulness. Let the word of Christ, the message, have the run of the house. Give it plenty of room in your lives. Instruct and direct one another using good common sense. And sing, sing your hearts out to God. Let every detail in your lives, words, actions, whatever, be done in the name of the Master Jesus, thanking God the Father every step of the way. The Message Bible has a way of bringing it right down where we live. Yes, it does. Have an I thank God kind of attitude and create a life of blessings beyond expectation. And it'll come because thankfulness multiplies the joys of life. Yes, it does. Number three, I learn. Once we develop an insatiable I learn attitude, God and his word can keep us on the right path directing us where we should go and what we should do. Proverbs 1.5, the classic Amplified Bible. The wise also will hear increase in learning. And the person of understanding acquires skill and attain to sound counsel so that he may be able to steer his course rightly. Wow. We encourage people, we encourage everyone hearing the sound of our voice when we personalize to personalize this Proverbs, Proverbs 1.5. 1, 5. You need it down in your spirit. And the best way to do it is personalize. That's it. Jonathan also will hear an increase in learning. And Jonathan, as a person of understanding, will acquire skill and attain to sound counsel so that he may be able to steer his way rightly. Mm. Hallelujah. If you need to increase your skill in the marketplace or your value as an employee, we would begin by confessing Proverbs 1.5 and putting your name in the scripture. If you need to increase your skill as a parent or again, grandparent, then confess Proverbs 1.5 and put your name in. Putting God's word in our mouths yes. can result in huge blessings. Amen. We love it when a friend desires our advice and just as much, so much so when it's one of our children. That's right. God wants us to use, well, he wants to use all of us. That's right. To help others. Amen. If you're interested in learning how to increase in wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, you will be blessed, as it says in Proverbs 8.35 and 36. Whoever finds me, wisdom, finds life, and draws forth, obtains favor from the Lord. But. But he who misses me, or sins against me, wrongs and injures himself. All who hate me, love and court death. Mm. As we increase in learning and understanding, we will be recognized as a problem solver. Hallelujah. The kind of person who makes things happen right. For the kingdom of God. Matthew seven sixteen, New Living Translation. You can identify them by the fruit. That is the way they can, that's the way they act. Can you pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? The fruit remains and is evident in eye learners. Mm -hmm. Okay, we've done iPhones and eye toys and a bunch of eyes. And now we're to number four, I grow. When it comes really to spiritual growth, it's important that we remember John 15, five in the, this, in the New Living Translation. 
Yes, I am the vine. You are the branches. He's pointing to us. Those who remain in me and I in them will produce much fruit. For apart from me, we need to remember this. You, Jesus said you can do nothing. Our growth, spiritual and otherwise, is dependent upon our relationship with Jesus. Our spiritual growth also determines the kind of fruit that we will bear in this life. In John 15, 2, classic Amplified Bible, it says, Any branch in me that does not bear fruit, that stops bearing, he cuts away, trims off, takes away. And he cleanses and repeatedly prunes every branch that continues to bear fruit to make it bear more and richer and more excellent fruit. We could really spend time getting into this. There's so much fruit in it, you might yes, say. Yes, there is. John 15, 8 in the Classic Amplify says, When you bear, produce much fruit, my Father is honored and glorified, and you show and prove yourselves to be true followers of mine. There's just so much about this, and there's so many really things we could go into. <clears throat> but maybe the question is twofold. What kind of fruit are we producing? And how can we produce more fruit? Notice that it said he lops off those branches that are not producing so they can produce more. That sometimes is the afflictions we don't want to go through. That's true. But we need to go through. Colossians 1.10, Classic Amplified says, that ye may walk, live, and conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the Lord fully pleasing to him and desiring to please him in all things, bearing fruit in every good work and steadily growing and increasing in and by the knowledge of God with fuller, deeper, and clearer insight, acquaintance, and recognition. If we want to grow in the kingdom of God and be an effective and productive fruit producer, it happens by our knowledge of God and with a fuller, deeper, and clearer insight then, well, into his ways, purposes, and desires for our lives. Amen. And amen. Number five, I love. Many believers feel that they have this love thing down. The I love? Yeah. But I feel led to do a little provoking to good works. All right. That's there true. are three people you need to love. Some people have even created an acronym for them. Joy. Simply put, they suggest Jesus first, others second, and yourself third. Now, I admit the logic to that is very sweet, but it's not scriptural. That's true. So follow me on this. First, Jesus. John 14, 15. Classic Amplified. If you really love me, you'll keep, obey my commands. John 14, 23. Classic Amplified. Jesus answered, if a person really loves me, He'll keep my word, obey my teaching, and my Father will love him. And we will continue to come to him and make our home abode, special dwelling place with him. No question, we're to love Jesus first. No question. We love him with our whole hearts, which will determine whether or not he comes to live with us. Second, love yourself. Here's why I differ with that joy acronym. We must love ourselves before we can love anybody else. That is so true. One of the largest problems in the world is the problem of loving and accepting ourselves for who we are, flaws and all. Jesus knows everything about you, and he loves you the way. Loves you. Anyway. I know, I love that. That will give you <laughs> all the reason you need to love yourself. That's it. You cannot possibly show love to others if you can't love yourself. Ever heard the expression, hurt people, hurt people? This may not even, this may not even want to hurt the ones, but they hurt. They may not want to hurt the ones they hurt. It's That's true. Right. Thank you. But their own hurt keeps surfacing and it happens anyway. That's right. The Apostle Paul talks about this fight for good and evil within us, as in Romans 7, 19 through 25. Mm-hmm. New Living Translation. I want to do what is good, but I don't. I don't want to do what is wrong, but I do it anyway. It, but if I do what I don't want to do, I'm not really the one doing wrong. It is the sin living in me that does it. Verse 21. I have discovered this principle of life, that when I want to do what is right, I inevitably 
do what's wrong. I love God's law with all my heart. But there's another power within me that is at war with my mind. The power makes me a slave to the sin that is still within me. Oh, what a miserable person I am. Who will free me from the life that is dominated by sin and death? Thank God. The answer is Jesus Christ, our Lord. That is so powerful. Loving ourselves ties in with the third person that we should love. Third, everybody else. Amen. Several times and seven times in Scripture, not several, seven times in Scripture, Word tells us to love others as we love ourselves. In other words, we must love ourselves in order to love others. Matthew 19, 19, classic Amplified. Honor your father and mother, and you shall love your neighbor as you do yourself. Matthew 22, 39, classic Amplified. And a second is like you. A second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as you do yourself. Mark 12, 31, classic Amplified. The second is like it. It is this. You shall love your neighbor as you love yourself. There is no other commitment greater than these. Luke 10, 27, classic Amplified. And he replied, you must love the Lord with all your heart and with all your soul with all your strength, with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. That's it. Hallelujah. Galatians 5.14, classic amplified. For the whole law concerning human relationships is compiled within one precept. You shall love your neighbor as you do yourself. James 2.8, classic amplified. If indeed you really Fulfill the royal law in accordance with the scripture. You shall love your neighbor as you love yourself. You do well. So we must love Jesus, ourselves, and others. That makes it so clear. Mm. Hallelujah. Okay. And number six, I praise. Hallelujah. Psalm 34, 1, Living Bible says, I will praise the Lord no matter what happens. I will constantly speak of his glories and grace. What? Well, when are we to bless the Lord? The scripture doesn't say, well, when things are going our way or when we, well, we feel like it today or when we're being promoted on the job or when we become debt free or when everybody's healthy again or when all our friends and family are saved. The scripture is extremely clear. We need to praise God at all times and especially when things are tough and getting rough. And we've been through some of those. Yes, we but have. let's go a little further. Psalm 34, 2, next verse, New Living Translation. I will boast only in the Lord. Let all who are helpless take heart. We need to brag on the Lord and not on anyone else. In Psalm 35, 28, it says, And my tongue shall speak of thy righteousness and of thy praises all the day long. Both Psalm 34, 1 and 2 are full of I praise. But really, he says to praise him at all times. In Thessalonians, it says, pray without ceasing, praise the Lord, and rejoice. Anyway, Amen. it is and seventh, to get you fired up. I pray. Praying for one another isn't just a good idea. That's it. It's a God idea. That's right. Second Timothy 1, 3. 2 Timothy 1, 3, classic amplified. I thank God whom I worship with a pure conscience and the spirit of my fathers. When without ceasing, I remember you day and night in my prayers. Mm. When we pray for one another on a continual basis, there's a powerful spiritual yes. dynamic yes. that is loosed in our lives. Yes. James 5, 16. Confess your faults one to another and pray for another that you may be healed. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. When I pray, tremendous power, dynamic in its working, is loosed in our lives. Prayer changes things. That means that we want things to change. We've got to be praying. That's right. Hallelujah. That is if we want things to change. We have to. We have. God's word on it. That's right. 
We yes. have the Word of God. Yes, the he truth, promises, the whole truth. and nothing but the truth. So help us, God. And like you were talking about a minute ago, really, there is a dynamic released, loosed into the atmosphere when we take the Word and let it loose and pray the Word. Every time I pray for someone, no matter where I'm at, I feel a release of joy in my life as I say amen. They're blessed by the prayer, but so am I. Amen. So am I. Let's change we get lives. Blessed. blessed when we pray for others. That's it. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Go to heraldhearing.com if you're blessed by the teaching of the ministry. Click the button that says soul seed. Just ask God what seed he'd have you sow. Just do what he says. That's all we ever ask. But we're also going to ask you to sow a special seed to channel WHFL. They're doing amazing work. Yes. Across eastern North Carolina. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And beyond. Until next time, next time we're together. Yep. Which is every morning at 8 o'clock. 8.30. 8 That's right. For which sauce for breakfast. Amen. Go to heraldhearing.com. You can find the number and the details. But until then, God bless you. Happy trails. And keep thinking rich thoughts. We love you. We appreciate you. Bye-bye.